All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're taking a look at the quickest pro street bike ever of Frankie Stotts. Went a 660 with a one. There is his father, Kent, and take a look at this. This is gonna be a nice trip back to memory lane. This is where it all started. Kent, it, this is bringing back such great memories to see this bike. First thing I wanna talk about is I advertise Frankie's bike as a street bike. The reason I do is the class is pro street, street tires, okay? But I've had a few people online say, hey, that's not a bona fide street bike. Well, back when you did it, okay? Back when you did it, not only did you have to have a plate on this thing, you guys had to run a road course too, right? Yeah, 12 mile road course. Everybody had to run the road course at the same time start and finish the road course and then shut your bike off and refire it while it's hot within a minute. And that that took, every time it would take one to three bikes out of competition before they ever made it past on the track. This bike is fresh out of a museum, that's why it's here. I was twisting Kent's arm a little bit and saying, hey, you gotta enter this thing. Best DT ever, you said what, 763? We we put it away, it held the record, the national record at 763 at the end of 2002. Wow. Then we built the new Blackbird. So from 2002 to last year with Frankie's new bike, we have picked up an entire second. That is a huge leap in drag racing. How have these bikes evolved? Well, it, um, in no leaps and bounds, uh, just progression. The tracks have gotten a little better, the tires a little better, our suspension is, we know how to work it more. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is the, the use of dad logging to show where the areas that we can improve. This is such an awesome motorcycle. Do you think back in those days when you're battling guys like Barry Henson, Ricky Gatz and all this, was it more difficult back then uh, having to complete the road course, having to have the motorcycle tagged? Or do you think what Frankie's doing now is certainly as difficult, if not more difficult? Well, one of the things, if you look, this still had a clutch in it that the rider had to release along with throttle control because we weren't allowed two steps at the time. So there was a lot of rider experience and expertise involved. And I, I put the analogy this way, when the class started in 95, we won that the first year in 95 and set the record in 834. We've come a long way, but during that time, I would say if you would have put Keith Dennis, one of the best riders at the time, uh, on any bike that qualified in the top half of the field, he would get it to the final. It wow. didn't have to be the fastest one there. The rider was about 80% of the equation. The machine still had to be very good. Well now, because everything is preset, it has taken a lot of the rider out of the equation, except for the fact, mostly, when it doesn't go perfect, then you need a Jeremy Teasley or Frankie Stotts on it to catch it early as it's wheeling or spinning, catch it early and save it and get you into the next round. Okay. That's where the rider comes in today. That's his biggest his biggest job. So it's still a rider's class, but yes. it has changed, it's evolved. A lot, a lot. Excellent. And this thing, I mean, the memories, what's, what's your all time greatest memory? If I made you pick out one win, one moment that stands out above the rest on this awesome machine, what would it be? Um, you know, these were heavy bikes, so we were, we were very happy just in the world finals. We won the world finals and uh, set the record before we put it away, and we were the first bike to run a sub 120 60 foot. We ran a 119, and everybody's like, how the hell did you do that? That was like unheard of at the time. Right. What are the 60 foots now for Frankie? 110. 110. 110 flat. We almost got a 109. Good Lord. Love it, Ken. Anything you'd like to add? Just thanks for everything for the last 20 years. Y you got it. thanks to Honda. If there's any way you can repay us, can, can we please see maybe even a burnout someday? Can we can we get you back out there? Well, Hans says, I didn't have time. I just picked it up from the museum. There's not even a, a battery in it or a fresh gas. It's gonna go to Bill Hans. He's the one, he was my partner when we built this bike. Uh, he's gonna put it on display, but he is gonna get it fired up uh, so that when we come back here a year from now, uh, he's gonna have it in Daytona 
for Bike Week bike next week. week. Oh, they'll next be year. drooling. They'll be drooling over it. And it will be running. I got a kind of idea that I'm going to start right here that we're going to kick around. I'm going to tag Brock Davidson, Ricky Gadsden, Barry Henson. I say we, let's let's have a, you know, NHRA just did their unfinished business. Yeah. Let, let's bring these bikes back. I know <laughs> Brock's is still sitting in his shop. Yeah. I think Muzzy still has his bike, so. Yeah. Let's do it, right? Well, you got to get Joe Morosco and Keith Dennis in there. We'll get Keith Dennis in there. And Godzilla. Godzuki. Godzuki. Yes. Do, uh, do we know where Godzuki is? Uh, uh, Tommy Maselli. Yes. Great. He's coming back to Real Street, I heard. You okay. Know, I just, I'll be 61 tomorrow. Happy birthday. And I think Tommy is going to, I think Tommy's two years younger, but we're, the old guys are still kicking it. Love it. Love it, man. Well, thank you for showing us. This was a great trip back in memory lane. Guys, we got to dig up some old footage of this. I'll tell you, 15, 20 years ago, this was the world's quickest street bike. And the cool thing is, you still got the world's quickest street bike. Some things never change. Thanks, Kent. Thank you.